We talk a lot here about cancel culture. Of course, there are different degrees of cancellation from the serious to the somewhat less impactful. Individuals can be ostracized after committing actual crimes, offending a group or person, or making a verbal or societal faux pas. The New York Times recently wrote a piece about cancel culture and how the shaming effort often has had an opposite impact of what was expected. Our next guest went through it. Jamie Kilstein, he was fired from a progressive radio show after allegations of sexual misconduct were raised against him. He denies the allegations. As a result, he's faced scrutiny and he knows how cancel culture can actually impact lives and careers. Jamie joins us now via Skype to talk a little bit about this. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. Hey guys, I really miss the old days when like I would just be introduced as uh, a comedian and it would be like the wacky like, you've seen funny man Jamie Kilstein on Conan and now it's like this sad man who's trying to rebuild his shattered life. <laughs> well, I've known but you, you long guys, enough. You, You're still yeah, a funny you guys know that intro. I only know you two as... Russian yeah. assets. So well, there you go. Kidding. So we're all yeah. sort of in we're this even. weird boat together. I mean, and listen, yeah. we want to talk about more than this, but yeah. this piece in the Times was really interesting um, about the premise was essentially all these people that we tried to cancel are all like doing fine and hanging out together. Is that, I mean, is that reflective of, of your life and how you feel about things? Uh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. My name uh, got mentioned in the piece after the journalist uh, reached out to me asked if I wanted to be in it um, and I told him that I didn't because I'm trying to rebuild my life and that there were no actual uh, charges and depression and blah 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 uh, and he used me anyway because uh, you know he's a scumbag um, however uh, the premise of the piece I mean no like it's not it's not true um, mm. I have here's the good thing is I have definitely met more people and I have been uh, I now have different views in my Twitter timeline. I mean, my yeah. whole thing, the reason my story became a story and essentially what it was, was I was accused of consensual dating. Um, but because I was this self-righteous, very left, I was part of call out culture. I was part of cancel culture. It was sort of this like funny, ha ha, the male feminist guy, uh, you know, cheated once and like had one night stands. Um, and so that kind of got blown up into this, this huge, uh, this huge thing. And a lot of people who have been in my situation have gone almost like far right, um, which I, I, I didn't want to do. I knew that my career probably would have been more lucrative at first if I became like former male feminist who now hates women. And I oh, would like, you know, you'd be raking it in. You'd be raking dude, it in. Dude, my yeah. Patreon would be yeah. kicking. Um, <laughs> But, and look, there were nights I debated it. There were literally, yeah. there was one night where I was crying, holding my cat, sleeping on my friend's couch because I like lost it. I wasn't fired from the show. That's also not true. Yeah. Um, I like, it was with my uh, ex-wife and like I stepped down and we tried to like do sure. the show together for a while. Anyway, but, uh, you know, after it all went down, yeah, I was like holding my cat and I was like, all right, I'm going to do, I, I got like a, a, a book offer. There was an editor who was really interested in me kind of doing the like, you know, the why I left the left book or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, like I've been, I've been trashed by liberals. Like maybe I am conservative now. And I literally, uh, YouTubed a Ben Shapiro video and I was like, I'll finally check out this Ben Shapiro guy. And then I was like, nope, nope. I'm still not conservative. <laughs> this and, is not for me. <laughs> but what is good about it is so I didn't read the article, um, because the guy was trash and it took all of my, willpower not to write him back for comment and be like if i ever see you on the street but then i was like that's probably not good to do to a reporter mm -hmm. um however i saw i know i do know a lot of people that were mentioned um in that article and it's not like we're doing i mean i, I don't want to speak for anybody else but for me it's been cathartic and nice to talk to people who don't see a headline and without reading the story, assume I'm like some creepy sex predator. You know, I have this wonderful girlfriend whose parents are these like sweet Christian conservatives from Dallas. I actually like wrote about them. Um, and, you know, my girlfriend was so excited to tell them about us. And I had to like, that was the first thing they see when they Google me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's I would take getting rid of that. And even when, you know, I knew it was going to come up on this show, like, mm -hmm. I can defend myself all day. But, man, when it comes to sex stuff, like, there's such shame behind it. Um, and, like, 
you know, I, 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 I would much rather people know like me and my girlfriend now than like me and like my failing marriage and trying to save it and have an open relationship and weird one night stands that I didn't want to be having. Like, that's not like sure. a fun, it's an embarrassing thing to talk about. Um, so yeah, I don't think that I've become friends and like cancel culture. Now we're all like living it up. I think there are a lot of people who have been canceled or gotten in trouble and found a new audience and have kind of leaned into that. And I think sometimes it's very sincere. Um, so like I have become more, uh, center on a lot of issues and that's just because I'm now exposed to those viewpoints. Um, but there are people who do it in like a vindictive way where right. it's like, these are the people that canceled me. I'm going to turn on the left and now their whole show is kind of like, or their whole like beat is dedicated to kind of doing the same thing that happened to them. Uh, but going after the super left and that's what I'm trying to, uh, avoid. Yeah, I think you're right, Jamie, which is uh, you did you did not take the easy path out. Now, that that gets to this real thing, which is what is what is the catharsis that you reached? I mean, you were one of these people. Like I said, I was telling you before the show, Joe Rogan always talks about you as like, oh, my friend Jamie Kilstein. He was always yeah. into like going after people, like you said, self-proclaimed male feminists. I mean, what what was what would it what advice would you give to somebody who's engaged in that type of behavior now? And what are what yeah. are they not understanding about our politics and our our culture so i can tell you that at even the thing i went through which was you know i was suicidal um I, I i bought the gear um it was really really bad and lost my money lost my audience etc um i am a happier human being now um by the way i also see the things that i could have done better i should have gotten out of my relationship sooner i was a hundred percent like um selfish at times and you know i mean look there are there are all these things that uh we should reflect on when we are called out on something and i think that's good and you know my biggest goal when this all happened was i can't become that bitter guy i can't you know like i'll still meet fans I, the majority of people who reach out to me to be like yo that screwed up what happened to you are women who actually had have been assaulted or have had um, something real and terrible happened to them. Um, every once in a while, I'll get a guy who's like, yo, bro, heard you on Rogan really funny. And I'm like, cool, thanks, man. And he's like, we got to do something about these whores, right? And you're like, no, 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 no. Like, you're not my audience. I, 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 I don't want that. And yeah. so I've avoided that. Um, and what I have tried to focus on is what I realize is take politics out of it. Whether you're on the left or on the right listening to this show, if you find yourself yelling at strangers all day on the internet, um, are you projecting? And I was, and it's not like I was covering up uh, some like secret life that maybe some people think, it's that I was miserable. It's yeah. that yeah. I wasn't, I didn't have good friends in New York. Um, I you know, was in this relationship that I was afraid to get out of because we kind of just turned into best friends. Yeah. Um, I was really depressed, I was really self-hating. Um, I felt like my comedy career, um, you know, at the time I was like very, prog I wasn't getting booked. I've always been on the wrong side of things business wise. I wasn't getting booked cause I was too progressive. My yeah. whole Conan appearance is me shouting about drones under the Obama administration. And the only other guest was Kobe Bryant. Like it wasn't the exact <laughs> audience, uh, I was looking for, like they got so much hate mail that like, I have not been back on that show. Um, and now that it's popular to be progressive, I'm like, let's talk about nuance. Like I've always been kind of yeah, dumb right. uh, when it comes to my, my business choices. But what I would say is like, examine your life because it's not that I've changed a lot of my political views. My, my show is still pretty liberal, um, but it'll call out the left more. But I have people who are conservatives, who are independents, listen to it just because I'm not a self-righteous D-bag. Like yeah. I... We see that with this show, on... too. Same thing. Well, I... We're willing to call out power on both yeah. sides. I mean, I do want to ask you about, though, like, how do you make amends? You know, because there, there, as we mentioned this, there's varying degrees of this, right? There's people who are actual, you know, sexual assaulters who go in that direction. I mean, that's an a entirely different thing. When you're talking about sort of boorish behavior or harassment or things that are inappropriate in the workplace, like, what's the impact on the women and how do you make amends? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, harassment and any of that stuff, uh, I didn't do and I wasn't uh, 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 accused of even. So I can't comment on that. I mean, look, if you're harassing people in the workplace, uh, you got to stop. Um, you should be fired um, for that. 
Um, I think that what I'm trying to do is what I'm trying to do essentially every time I have to talk about it is not go fully in the other direction. So I said mm-hmm. this on Rogan and kind of my talking point that I always try to say is I've had a lot of people want me to go on their show to just talk about how men are suffering under me too. And I'm not, I'm never going to be that guy. Um, because for as many guys who were falsely accused, um, there are infinitely more women who have never gotten justice for their right. assault, for their, uh, you know, bosses who say they're, the, you know, they'll be fired unless they, you know, have sex with them. Like any legitimately creepy things. Mm-hmm. However, what I will say is when we start to conflate Al Franken with Harvey Weinstein, when we start to uh, talk about someone asking someone out at work compared to, or having a consensual relationship even, um, compared to, you know, I'm going to use my power to either give you a promotion or fire you if you don't go out with me. Um, I think you're doing damage to men, sure, but you're also doing a lot of damage to women, where when women who are sexually assaulted hear about, you know, a guy asking someone out at work, And that's being lumped in in the same category. I think that's really dangerous. And it's also going to push men away. I think men are becoming very defensive and very scared. Again, not that men are the victim, but they're being defensive and scared where they're getting in trouble when they try to ask questions and engage in conversation. And what we should be doing is educating people and educating everybody. I mean, look, I think everyone knows what's creepy behavior and what's not. And they know uh, 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 when they're taking things too far. And all of that has to start. I mean, that has to start in sex education. Like, instead of teaching abstinence, like, teach young men how to, like, satisfy a woman so they don't become, like, resentful on 4chan all day. Like, there are things <laughs> and, uh, we can do and there are conversations we can have. I can say, for me, um, you know, what I'm trying to do is just, like, I was the kind of guy who I was very selfish um, not just in relationships. I was very selfish in my life. I was the kind of dude who, if my girlfriend was like, hey, Jamie, your mom's on the phone, I'd be like, tell her I can't talk. I'm tweeting about feminism. Like, I <laughs> thought I thought I was, like, doing this, like, good work. Uh, when in reality, I was just kind of burying a lot of the issues that I didn't want to deal with in my real life because I was getting validation yeah. that way. Yeah. And I think that's really dangerous. I think, of course, like, I'm so glad. Like, I can say this. Like, I am still so glad that the Me Too movement is happening. It is important. Mm. Um, I don't care if people are like, were you a casualty of it? I'm like, fine, fine. Um, but wow. you're going to do damage for men and women um, if we start... Uh, lowering the bar so much that, you know, someone who has a consensual one night stand and doesn't want to be in a relationship afterwards is being compared to like mm. a think, date rapist. I yeah, think that's well really said. well said. Jamie, I did your podcast. It was super fun. Tell people where they can find it and what it's it? about. Yeah. So, uh, Jamie Kilstein podcast, uh, it's on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all the links are on jamiekilsteinpodcast.com or you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, and it's trying to have these conversations, you know, it's trying to, uh, there are a bunch of people, uh, that what that dumb article, uh, did kind of get right, um, was that there are a lot of people, not canceled people, but there are a lot of people who feel like they don't have a tribe who feel like yeah. if they don't line up a hundred percent with conservative or liberal ideology, um, that they're not allowed in like the cool kids club. Right. And there are a lot of people who are left on some issues, right on some issues, center on a bunch of issues, and they see BS on the right and the left, and they're tired of it. And that's kind of what the podcast is doing. It's mm-hmm. building uh, this army of misfits and outcasts and weirdos. And it's like, what you guys are doing? Uh, it's interviewing people from the left and the right, actually trying to look for common ground and solutions instead of just uh, righteously screaming yeah. that people have blood on their hands and accomplishing nothing but feeling good about right. themselves. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. Great to see you, Jamie. Really great talking to you. Thanks We're for talking to us Thank about you, this. guys. Keep it up. It. All right. All right, and we'll have more rising after this.